racism. It must be a uh, learned behavior, right? Because you never meet like a racist baby, though I would love to. <laughs> Just an itsy bitsy, teeny weeny racist. <laughs> what were his first words? We'd rather not say. <laughs> and for the record, they were taken out of context, okay? <laughs> just got his divorce finalized. My mom called, she's like, you need to send him a card. I don't think Hallmark makes that card. <laughs> what would that card look like? Just a dude sitting in a studio apartment smiling? <laughs> you open it up, it says, we didn't like her either. <laughs> she sucked. <laughs> they make the easy cards, Hallmark. Happy birthday, happy, happy anniversary, the easy to articulate cards. It's never a difficult card. Uh, here's, a, here's a card I'd like to see, just a picture of Darth Vader shrugging. You open it up, it says, turns out I'm not your father. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into my biological father recently. I told my friend, he was like, is your biological father a good person? And I was like, if he were, I probably would not refer to him as my biological father. <laughs> Most people say dad. <laughs> I look exactly like him. I show my friend a picture. He was like, oh my God, it's like you guys were separated at birth. We were. <laughs> I liked the cool dad when I was a kid. My friend's dad would smoke weed with us. And I was like, this guy is cool, you know? Now that I'm older, it turns out he is not cool. <laughs> turns out he's a grown man that did drugs with children. So, quite the opposite. First time I met my biological father, he took me out to lunch, and the place he took me turned out to be a family-style restaurant, which, kind of ironic. <laughs> they should make broken family-style restaurants. <laughs> you just walk in like, where's the waiter? <laughs> I think he abandoned us, I don't know, but... <laughs> they forget to come out and sing happy birthday, they're like, we forgot, but... <laughs> we'll make it up to you next year. Another guy comes out, he's like, I don't actually work here, I'm just banging the owner. Uh, I'll be your step waiter. <laughs> Is that one too real for the crowd? Sorry. It's <laughs> on the subway, I'm a New Yorker, and I, I saw a couple fighting. And as they're yelling at each other for like 10 minutes, a rat ran up to the woman's foot and bounced off and ran away. And she screamed, but her boyfriend just laughed in her face. And she was like, that is not funny. And he was like, it's kind of funny. And she was like, no. So I just went up to them. I was like, excuse me, miss. I saw the whole thing and it was funny. <laughs> I do this every night. I got a great gauge on what's funny and not funny. I used to fight with my ex all the time. She was mad I didn't cry during the breakup. She's like, you're not crying during this breakup, but you cried during that Magic Johnson documentary. <laughs> Maybe that should show you how out of touch with reality she is, that she thinks she's in the same inspiration category <laughs> as the greatest point guard that ever played the game. That guy played in the All-Star game with HIV. She wouldn't <laughs> me when she had a headache, all right? I mean, Magic Johnson, I know we're in Boston, but that guy's a legend. Every, every endorsement, Converse, seven up, he never got Trojan, but I think he deserved to get it. <laughs> Who would have been better? If you were on the fence about wearing protection and you saw Magic Johnson's face in the box, you'd be like, we should definitely wear <laughs> a condom. This is a commercial, you're coming out of a blackout, you wake up next to a very regrettable one night stand, you see a little picture of Magic's face in the box, you're like, oh, Magic. Thanks for the assist. <laughs> That's, you know. Because it's a fun AIDS joke. That's why. You know, it's upbeat. I never wore a condom with my ex-girlfriend because she was on the pill, Ambien. And uh, I didn't feel the need, you know? Some guy asked me on Facebook, this Austrian guy, he's like, you want to join my hate group? I was like, who do you hate? He's like, blacks, Jews, everyone. And I am Jewish, he's not even doing background checks. <laughs> what kind of lazy recruitment process? I didn't even tell him I was Jewish. I'm like, I'm just gonna join the hate group and then drop subtle hints, like while we're committing hate crimes, just walking around hating, I'm holding the torch. I'm like, dude, you know what this flame reminds me of? Hanukkah. <laughs> the miracle of lights. It's like, yeah, I guess. You do hate Jews, I'm like, dude, I hate them. I hate them so much I'm burning up, I'm schwitzing. That's how much I hate these people. 
He's like, all right, we march on Saturday. I'm like, I can't do Saturday. <laughs> what helps racism? Good food. You can't be racist when you're eating good food. That's why I'm annoyed by that terrorist group, all Shabab. They sound delicious. <laughs> you can't be pure evil and yummy sounding at the same time. That's like if there was an Italian extremist group named the Marinara Boys or something. <laughs> all Shabab sounds like something I would order when I'm wasted. Let me get some of that all Shabab with the side of Hamas. That's why gays need their own cuisine, right? It'd be harder to be homophobic if you're like, dude, you wanna order in some gay? You'd be like, I don't know, that stuff tears my ass apart. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the white sauce is good, but you know. I didn't want to, I had to, you know. I was talking to a guy who told me gay sex isn't natural because it's not sex for the purpose of reproduction. I was like, no sex I've ever had was for the purpose of reproduction. <laughs> that sounds like sex that's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> he was like, it's against nature. I was like, I have fucked couch cushions before in my life, so I'm in no position to judge anyone on what they do with their penis. He's like, yeah, but God did not intend a man and another man. I'm like, I'm pretty sure the guy who manufactured my couch did not anticipate me having sex with it. Some things are out of the maker's hands. That annoys me when people bring God into the gay argument, right? If there's a God, I kind of hope he's gay. Just for those people, you know? What if they had to meet him? They get up to heaven, God is just like, I'm gonna fuck all of you. They're like, I thought this was heaven. He's like, it's heaven for me. <laughs> Once a year, I'll, I'll get into it with a troll. It's like my Mardi Gras. I'll really like, I'll let it fly, you know? I like, I, I'll look, but I'm also like, I mean, I'm not gonna get involved or engage, but once in a while, it is fun. Last year, uh, and don't pretend that, act like you're a great person here. We're all mortified by this. But remember the baby that got eaten by the alligator at Disney? It's a tragic thing. Uh, and I was like, that's terrible. And then two weeks went by and I was like, all right, it's time. <laughs> it's time. Of course, it's terrible, but let me fucking try. <laughs> and uh, I went on stage that night at the Comedy Cellar, and I said, I don't mean to come off like a gun nut. I just think if that baby was carrying a weapon, he'd still be with us. That's how I feel. <laughs> Not a great joke, but it's timely. And there's a woman on the front row, and she just goes, no. <laughs> and I was like, well, she's like, you can't joke about that which guarantees I will continue to keep joking about it. <laughs> if you know anything about comedians, that's all we need. <laughs> and she's like, no, you can't. I was like, so I'm like, did you even watch the baby's funeral on TV? Which it wasn't on TV. They don't, <laughs> they don't televise baby funerals, but it is a pilot I'm thinking of pitching. <laughs> Coming this fall to MTV after Teen Mom. <laughs> Uh, it kind of asked Alex, did you even see the baby's funeral on TV? And she said, no, I guess I haven't seen the baby's funeral on TV. And I said, well, if you did, you would have seen the mother come on through tears and say, see you later, alligator, which is... <laughs> she gets up and walks out. Her husband stays put, which is how you know it's a good joke. <laughs> and there's a part of me that is excited by this, because I know I'm the subject of conversation in the car ride home. You know that she's like, he was terrible, and the husband's like, I thought he had some good stuff, you know? <laughs> so they email the comedy seller, my home club, and the comedy seller forwards me the email. Ha, 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 with 11 exclamation points. <laughs> I counted, I did count. And I will now read you the best email I ever got in my life. Here's how it opens. Okay, you want blunt? I'll be blunt. <laughs> so you know some bad shit is coming. It's never like, you want blunt? Wonderful evening, thank you. <laughs> a disgusting person, Sam Morell, took the stage and spent the first few minutes of his act disrespecting the two-year-old child who was murdered by the alligator at Disney. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, murdered is a strange word choice to use here, you know? That makes it sound like the alligator was paid to do it. Then afterwards, he went to a payphone and was like, it's done. <laughs> I 
And then he belched and ran away in a trench coat. <laughs> I have never in my life been so offended and repulsed by someone. I immediately left and stopped to tell your staff why. This is my favorite part. They followed me to make sure my drinks were being paid. <laughs> I mean, it's just so wonderfully condescending that she's like, I'm furious. And they're like, mm-hmm, those Coronas weren't free. So. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> I should say that the comic before me on this show, a friend of mine, she made like six Holocaust jokes and this woman wasn't bothered by any of them. She even mentioned them in the email. She's acting like they didn't even happen. I mean, some would call her a denier, but you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I would expect all human beings would be offended by a sicko making jokes about a two-year-old baby's tragic death, saying his mother probably said, later, Gator, at his funeral. <laughs> I mean, even in text form, it kind of holds up, you know? It's, <laughs> this is a woman who's trying to get me fired over later, Gator, a play on words, which to me is a bit of a crock, honestly. It really is. <laughs> no. I have posted about this on every social media account I own. She sounds fun. <laughs> I've asked everyone I know to share it. The comedian himself replied to me to say, pretty strong act, huh? <laughs> I did do that, that is true. If you troll me, I will occasionally troll back. <laughs> I'm hosting a sports show and I basically got media trained because I think they saw me as a liability and <laughs> They're worse. But they were reading some tweets. I don't know if you've ever had a gray-haired person read your Twitter. It is enlightening, to say the least. <laughs> One of the tweets they actually read out loud was, uh, someone tweeted at you here, Sam, that uh, your comedy is a waste. And you replied, your father's jizz was a waste. <laughs> I'm like, so you want me to keep doing that or no? She ends it by saying, what a complete and utter pathetic excuse for a human. He doesn't deserve to breathe the same air or live on the same planet as that precious little boy's family. He can go fly a kite. <laughs> Which that last part, it always gets me. I would love to fly a kite. It sounds like a pleasant recreational activity. Kite flying. <laughs> She's very tightly wound. She could use a vacation. I'm thinking Disney, but you know. <laughs> The owner of the club is a very good guy. I like him a lot. He emailed this woman and said, we feel bad you had a rough night here. We'd like to make it up to you and maybe comp you and your husband for a night out. And I hope they accept. And I think it'd be a great idea for them to rebook me for the gig. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier. They're sitting there like, finally, we can take our mind off that awful, awful man. <laughs> your first comic coming to the stage, Sam the Gator Morell. 